Okay, so okay, so actually this one you will find that there are many many online tutorials. So uh, you probably you can find the same issue, topic in YouTube tutorial or Unity 3D Learning Center. Uh, this is just basic C sharp scripting in uh, Unity. How comfortable are you? Actually, many of you are actually computer science background, right? So I don't need to explain what are variable or blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, then you know, have you, you guys all used C sharp scripting in Unity already? No? Okay, so then I'll just lightly touch that part only. Uh, and then you can bring a magical project next week, right? <laughs> all right, so, uh, and then Ali, are you familiar with C Sharp too? No. Okay, so uh, C or Java? Let me just think about the last project. Okay, so you guys are comfortable with Java? Yeah. yeah. Then you're comfortable with C Sharp? No. Never, never oh, you never use it? Like, I did like uh, Java and C++, but never C Sharp. Oh, okay. I'm sure. Oh, okay. Uh, who, then who are comfortable with C Sharp? Are you only? I thought that you guys were already comfortable with C sharp. No, not at all. No, not at all. Uh, Python. Okay, okay. Here's that Python beginner. Python intermediate. Yeah. Python advanced. What do I mean by Python advanced? I know how to use PyTorch. No, I know how to use neural network in Python. One, yeah. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. But nobody? You have computer science background. No? You are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, machine learning, so you learn machine learning, right? Yeah, oh, you are learning right now, right now, but I didn't uh, learn it yet on Python. So uh, okay, so okay, then I just cover really from basic. So if you are familiar, you can allow to do something to watch YouTube, <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh uh. And then if you're just in case you're not familiar with, but you're not, uh, how about C? Are you comfortable with C? Okay, I thought if you're quiet, I thought it was yes, but I suppose to say it's no. Okay, um, the base, the best place, but you're all familiar with Python. So you know basic concept of, assume you are okay. Okay, so uh, uh, for me, my best place to learn computer programming language was W3 school. Do you guys know this place? Yeah, yeah this one is, well, I think, the most cleanly organized. So actually, I love this place. So uh, there are a lot of different languages, uh, and then there are a lot of uh, different, many different languages. In kind of, it's very great place to use them as a reference and then quickly transform your knowledge in one language to another language. So if you're not familiar with kind of C sharp, just go through this website. This is really good. You can learn C sharp in one or two hours. Uh, really, if you, based on the assumption that you know one language well. So basically here's C sharp intro. Uh, C sharp, I, I almost think it's almost identical to Java, personally, I think. So it's just Microsoft version of Java, I think. And it, the, the syntax almost identical to uh, Java. However, one just tricky thing was well, a couple of trickier uh, keywords, that's it. Uh, and then it uses object-oriented programming as a kind of like basic template. And are you guys are comfortable with object-oriented program? Yes. Okay, so you guys are all good. Uh, so a little, little bit checking. So using simply same thing with input in Python. Namespace, are you comfortable with namespace? No. So just who aggressively say, oh, yeah, those for who didn't aggressively. So namespace is kind of similar thing that, let's say you have a class program that your friend make another class program. So they are name of name kind of overlapping. So you can divide those things using namespace. So 
So it's a space for names kind of for each person. And then there are a lot of, this is kind of the, the most, it's not difficult at all, it's kind of just convert something in, in Python, private, public, protected, just ignore that. It's my best suggestion. You don't need them at all. Anyone disagree? Or any, okay, but my suggestion, just ignore them. You don't need them at all. So just kind of just consider, and then class function, that's it. And list, uh, that's it. And comment, you probably know variable. You probably all know uh, anyone who can tell me the difference between double and float. Yeah, yeah just the, which one is smaller? Yeah, so we just use float because it saves memory. That's it. Basically, the same thing. And then data type. Yeah, data type boolean. I'm hardly sure that nobody has problem. Type type casting. I'm pretty sure. anyone question about type casting. Okay, so that's good. It's like the same uh, as C, like you just put the type, the desired type in the uh, Yeah, the simple, yeah, 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 matching the data type, that's it. And then operators, mathematics, I'm not sure, strings, boolean, if else, switch. Oh, okay. How, huh? how are the strings in C sharp? Like, uh, is it? Uh, I think it's the same. Like just... it, it is like uh, an array of characters. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. But Okay, because like I, in C++, it's really a pain to work with like string. Uh, uh, is but, it easier or? Uh, okay. It just kind of like offer just uh, additional functions to okay. work with text or that's it. Just, yeah. Uh, Boolean, if else, switch, yeah, this cases, while loop, for loop. So these are an array. Uh, uh, one, one thing I hope to want to mention is how, how uh, anyone who are not comfortable with what is it collection class using generic type? Who, okay, I am not comfortable with I'm Java. Not sure what you are talking about. Huh? I'm not sure what you are talking about. So the array list with this cult kind of oh, okay. I don't like like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. This okay. one. Are you you are comfortable? Yeah. Okay, everybody comfortable? Okay, all right. It's just a list with on not just any type. That's it. Okay. okay. Then function. You are familiar with that. So you are probably already okay. So I think I don't need to go through everything. All right. Ah, uh, okay. I have to introduce one another concept called component in Unity. So the thing. So something you need to know in larger world about game world. So there's a kind of so-called game world here. And then how the Unity divides the game world into multiple small world is known as scenes. And scene is kind of like, uh, I, I kind of uh, uh, just like this uh, Angry Bird games. It's simply self division of one game into multiple steps. That's it. Uh, or, or you can just think of it as game levels. Uh, so this kind of, you can imagine that each level become each scene. Uh, or actually, um, you can think of it as sub scene. Actually, I recently, I really enjoy playing. Uh, do you know this game? I don't know what is an English game. Copy. Do you, know, do you know this game? Oh, the, I mean, the game itself is very simple, but the word, all the different scenes in this game was amazing. It's, it's, really, it's, it's really a lot than I imagined. And then there are a lot of uh, kind of hidden yeah. words. Huh? There is a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that, that's you can think of it, the Unity, has a total 3D world here, but you can divide those worlds into multiple scenes and scenes inside of it. So it's kind of nested scenes. And then kind of you kind of a concept that needs to be clear is actually called asset. So every object, including sound, whatever 3D object is all called asset. It's just kind of terminology, that's it. And then each asset, the so-called component. 
So component is you can check it inspector. And then actually, if you check one, whatever, if you go to camera light, this each one subdivided triangle, this each one known as component. So component is kind of like, it's kind of module that provide each asset a special kind of functionality. So that's some so kind of, uh, I hope you to make sure that this hierarchy of structure, I hope you're familiar with. And then all the scripting that we are going to use is actually this one we can think of it. This one is kind of pre-built component. However, each of these are or can be developed by using script. And originally it's, it's all script basically, but it, all these scripts are actually kind of visual, it's kind of like user interface that using kind of your know, buttons and number and that's it. And whenever you want to add component, you can add component. And then script is simply another component, that's it. Uh, so let's go back to, so now let's go back to a project. So let's kind of do start something, a simple one. So here, I probably, you're already familiar with this. So this one is basically simply cube that I just make a bar. Uh, to make this bar, you can actually simply, uh, you can create object and I just simply add cube and then I just change its scale, that's it. So I just change it and manipulate it and just make this bar, that's it. And then, uh, one of the default one, and then if you select this one, I didn't really mention this one before. If you press Alt and move around, it's, it's orbit. So I just kind of, uh, just following one of the famous tutorial, uh, this one is simply a sphere, uh, that's it. So a sphere is placed on top of a little bit above this bar, and you know how the physics works. So kind of two, so these are just geometry. And let's imagine that you want to add some, uh, some physics word characteristic like jumping, uh, friction, resistance, or kind of water, like all those things that can be added by using component, that's it. So let's kind of talk about it that, so this one ball, this is called, I call this sphere. Uh, remember just two things. So, uh, uh, so component is kind of behavior. And then one of those components is called a rigid body, as you see here. And actually, uh, if I kind of create just one 3D object cube, this one does not have a rigid body component yet. But if you want to make a kind of a geometry really work like a physical object in the world, such as something dropping like this, you have to add, you have to transform, you have to add rigid body component. And to do that, just add a component and you can search many components here, but one of them is actually rigid body. So you can actually search it and then there are 2D version of it and nothing has it, no extra type of text is called, is a 3D, a 3D rigid body system. So rigid body decide the density of a mass and other kind of uh, 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 characteristics. So this is the one. And particularly important is actually use gravity. So let's say that uh, there is a sphere. Uh, for now, I just, uh, so this is, and then I just play this run button uh, this is what you are going to run today. And one thing is move around. And then actually the ball actually move down. Uh, and then this ball, and then this ball sphere. So let's say that uh, if you check it, the sphere, uh, this one has rigid body. And so far, this one does not, this one's so unchecked. The user gravity box is unchecked. And actually, if I check this one, uh, this will move down. And then um, I just reset. However, this bar, this is, I called it cube, does not have rigid box. 
can you identify why? Why I didn't use widget box for this one? It's seemingly like I told you that to make something real object in Unity 3D, looks like I have to add widget box component, but I didn't add it. What happened if I add it? So let's just add it. Uh, nothing will harm you. So I just select it and I just add component and I just add widget box. And at first time, I just uncheck it and let's see the difference. And if I do it, it just fall down. It, it, now it has a, at the beginning, it doesn't start move, but because the, the ball above it hit it. And now it kind of, it's not gravity because the ball hit the bar, it just try, try to rotate, that's it. And if I use gravity, and then if I do that, it just come down, it, 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 gravity applies to that, so that's it. Right, so I just, and then to remove this rigid body system, simply make sure that, so when you, when you jump around left side of the window and right side of the window, make sure that this one shows the one that is selected here. Uh, that if you're not comfortable with Unity, that's the first thing that may confuse you. So I select this. And then there's a rigid body system, this component. So I just remove component. And when I run it, so it just worked like this. So meaning that uh, this strange box. And the another thing, uh, okay. So strangely, this one is actually now I'm in a game mode. I can even select this block then I can change some parameters. Let's say I add a component, a rigid body, and then I, I can change that. And whatever you do while you are in running mode will not be saved. So meaning that whatever you do in game mode will become nothing. So that's something you have to be careful about it. So when you're working on, and then how can you check whether you are in game mode or sim mode? You can check here. So if there's nothing, you are in game mode. You are in game mode. If you can see something here, this, this one, you are actually in scene mode. So when you do apply something, when you do something, make sure that you are in scene mode. Uh, that's the uh, beginner's uh, most confusing part. Okay. Right. And then uh, one quick thing is, so this one, okay, so now, so this one I talk about rigid body. And now the, the jumping thing is not rigid body issue. This one is jumping thing is actually called a physical materiality known as. So this one, if, you, if I check spear, and if you kind of a little bit, okay, so this one is a spear, if you check about spear collider, it's interesting that they called it material and then ball physics materiality is assigned here. Actually, if you see, if I just make a spear above here, this one does not have nothing. So this one says none yet. So to apply this physics materiality, you have to, this materiality to spear. Then now you see that this material will is changed to physics. <coughs> and then to create a, this physical materiality, physics materiality, so simply click here, not here. This one, as you see that this one, the kind of context menu when I click here and the context menu when I click here are different and then go create, then you can actually create Physics materiality, where, where are you? Uh, folder. Yeah, here, physics, physics material. And if you click here, you can create a new one. So you can rename it a little bit later uh, now, or just rename it something my P. And then here you see one, two, three, four, five things. Uh, this one are kind of most frequently used options. So 
Dime, so you probably know what is friction. So this is friction. So this one kind of going there, you kind of, there, there's a kind of friction, resistance. But there are two different friction because when it is stopped, you need actually harder power to move it because there's a, a kind of momentum. So there are two different things, dynamic friction and static friction. So meaning, so there are two different things. The, base, the best way is to test it with different number. And the bounces is, it's kind of it's the same thing with light bounce that there's a ball that it will kind of coming and hit it. So if the bounce is one, if one comes down, it will move. It, it maintain the same energy, and then it will repeat forever because there's no energy loss. But if you do uh, bounces like zero point five, then fifty percent of energy will miss, and then it will kind of come maybe just half of it. Depending on the mass, but however, and then friction combined and bouncing combined is what happens when two objects hit each other. So there are many different ones. So friction means what happened one friction property and the other friction uh, property will meet together. If it is something like glass, uh, you may want to use minimum. But if you are using something rubbery, sticky thing, you may want to use maximum. And when you actually make a kind of bounce, like kind of like if you use something sponge, then actually it will absorb all the energy. Then you are going to use minimum. Or if you kind of hit two ball, kind of rubbery balls meet together, then probably it will multiply. And if you use maximum, it may use one of the maximum for the bounce value. So probably here, you probably can see the difference simply changing that. So I selected the sphere for now. So there is four physics and four, if I check four physics now, it, the bounce is one and uses maximum. So kind of when I play this, I just click one more time. And it just jump like this and then stop it. If I change this one to minimum, and then if I run one more time, then you see that this one is almost do not bounce at all. If I do, oh, so multiply is kind of like, so why is this one doesn't bounce anything? I use multiply and one has zero bounce. So when they multiply, it becomes zero. And if you use average, it just to somewhere in the middle. Uh, so just the best way to apply all these kind of settings is simply try many different times, changing by their numbers. Okay, so these are the roughly a physical word. Now let's go back into script. Uh, so now I kind of, uh, so what happened here is that, uh, so actually each asset, you can imagine that each asset inside of it has its own script inside. It just, you are, we are not open it yet. However, just assume that each of five, any asset in Unity will have scripting in one anyway. And then actually, if you see main camera, you see position, rotation scale, all those are basically script inside of it. But simply, it simply shows you using interfaces, that's it. And as soon as you run this play button, all this scripting start to run at the same time together. That's why as when I click this one, it took a little bit of time because now it starts everything starts all together. So that's how it works. So it's kind of like parallel system. So if there is a five asset, you can think about the oh, there are five programs running in parallel together. Now, uh, so looks like, but looks like they have nothing here. And then uh, to start a new script, uh, it's the same thing in the asset window, right mouse button, create, and then add the C-sharp script and just give a name, my first script. 
and say that. And then you and then once you click it, you can see the code here. And then you see that all the code script has the same structure. So com the most common library libraries any script uses is collection, generic, and Unity engine. You just just imagine that oh, okay, it's got kind of default thing. You don't need to be bothered. And then uh, ignore all the public private things. We don't we don't even need to read it. So then what the first thing is oh, this was the default structure of any code in Unity is object oriented program. So class is the, the one. And then you see my first script is the name of it. And then this colon, what do anyone knows what is colon in C sharp or Java? Inheritance. inheritance, yes. What is inheritance? Like um, the style of object takes all the properties of the parent object. Yeah. How does it differ from association? Uh, maybe because like we can override some properties now. Okay, so let's kind of make it simple. In which case do you use inheritance? And in which case do you use association? Computer scientist. <laughs> <laughs> For example, uh, the parent class is like person. Uh -huh. and, uh, what, uh, and if the class is like this class is a type of person. Yes. We can use inheritance. Yes, and association. It's not maybe it has some. Ah. Okay. So you can look okay, at so you you divide that way. Okay. Uh, uh. Long story short, let's say that your parents give you you a credit card and it's your all yours. <laughs> or so kind of a inheritance most popularly used. Because you don't want to be bothered by code that someone developed it. So you simply want to use it as a template, then you use inheritance. You use association because you, that is actually one of the member. So it's kind of the same thing like a variable or sub functions. So if you want to simply use someone developed it as part of your code, you use association. And then your previous boss or your previous colleagues make something and you don't want to be bothered and use it, then inherit it. So what here, what does that mean by mono behavior is, okay, please follow this rule, then you'll be fine. And then you just have to use it. So, so that's, why, that's why all any script inside Unity need to inherit this mono behavior, which is developed by previous engineer. So you need to inherit it. And then start and update. Uh, you, this is really common in anywhere in Arduino or Python or processing. So start function runs. This, these two are special functions that start start once at the beginning, and the update is kind of keep running repeatedly. It's just kind of wild loop without anything. However, the key thing is this one: how often it will update. It's the key. Something you need to understand it. And then it already give you an answer once per frame. And then so now you need to know what is a frame? What is frame? It's like uh, every time the game is random. Like, uh, it's like, for example, uh, usually like uh, if the game is uh, rendered at the screen, like. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, exactly. Second. Yes. So your monitor re render yeah. its frame again and again. So I said the frame, notion of the frame comes from movie industry. Basically, so what do you know? What is the general frame rate of row standard animation? Oh, that the minimum frequency is that I does not see the difference. Twenty-four. Oh yes, probably. And you're right. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but do you know what is really good? Usually we take thirty to be like. Probably. Yes, yes. That's a kind of like something better one. And then in recently, if you check about the monitor, you probably see one twenty hertz monitor these days actually that's so it's kind of like four times faster than this okay so that's this and then this frame is really kind of like uh, so depends on your how powerful your computer is actually uh, and then so kind of actually this one but normally i was checking about what is the frame but i didn't really find it so you need but what you can do is you can change the frequencies by 
a time scale or something. Uh, this will be an issue if when you actually handle, so it looks like 25 is kind of default per second, but you, actually, but you can increase or decrease it later. So this one update like uh, 25 times per second. So now you kind of see that, oh wait, okay. So that's the one thing. Okay, so let's kind of start. And then this one, when a code is stayed here, it just save the file. It doesn't do anything. So to run this code, it is supposed to be inside in one of the assets as a component. So let's say I just kind of move this one into block. And now if you see the block, it has a script and the script has my first script is here. Uh, you can do, so there are many occasions that you simply make one script and you can apply the same script to many objects. Or you can actually apply one script for each object. So there are many different occasions. The first case, you may simply one script and apply to many objects. You may prefer to save, give a good name, and then by double clicking it, and then you can actually, then it will open Visual Studio, and then you can actually change the script. And if you remember where all this code applied to which asset, but if you don't know, uh, it, actually the general good habit is match the name of the asset and the name of a script is a good habit. And actually there are certain occasions that you must follow this rule. And then other cases is, oh, I want to change any code in this script, then I just simply select an object and then it may have a script component in the inspector window and then you can simply click this uh, three dot button and then you can actually add that script here, then you can open that code. So there are two different ways. Okay. And then let's say that, uh, so now let's make sure that, so block is the block code that is here. And then let's just kind of uh, uh, use it as an example. So so this is the code you are going to see. So ignore all this imported file and then public ignore that. So, so only you need to know that, okay, this is a class. So class have class uh, variable and the function. And I called, I told that the start is, it will just run once. And then I just, I just, I try to clean it as clean as possible. And there's nothing, but let's just try one thing here. So the one of the basic thing is actually, so is to know how to use print like Python, but to print inside of this code, you have to use debug and then probably I consult, no, no, debug. What is it, debug that? Log, ah, log, sorry there. So we can actually use log and then you can add whatever inside. So I just say that this is uh, the function uh, runs at the beginning. And then you need semicolon at the end of it. Uh, and then to save it, you can actually select this one or control S. So now this one is saved in the block CS file. And the block CS file is kind of assigned inside of this. Uh, uh, actually, I changed the block, right? So if I run it, then something is run, and then I stopped it. And if you check the console next to project, you can see any error messages here. There are too many. So I just clear and then run it. And then I just stopped it immediately to see what's going on at the beginning. So now at the beginning, this is the function that runs at the beginning. So this is the one that printed at the beginning and the rest are coming here. So now we just learn how to do that. And then if you actually add some code here in the update, so also we can do debug log and then uh, this code, this code runs 
repeatedly while frame is updating. So now I just write down here and then a semicolon here. So I save it, coming back, and it kind of reload the script. And then I clear this console and then run it. And then I just stopped it. Then as you see that this is the function runs at the beginning, it runs once and just another code. And then this code runs repeatedly while frame is updating. Instead of repeating this one, actually the number is changing. So meaning it will kind of continuously shooting, that's it. So coming back to, I just, okay, so coming back to script. Uh, so this is just basics of it. Uh, so now the one of the, another basic thing. So as you see here, let's say that I, so far I am running this block scripting and block, if you check about block and inspector, you see transformation, position, rotation, scale, cube, mesh, material, lighting. What does, can you guess what does this mean? These are all? Huh? I don't know. Variables of this script. Meaning you can use them freely. Any, any names in here on the inspector, you can freely get them or set them. Are you familiar with you know, OP sector and vector? Okay, so you can actually use them all the time. So let's kind of take a look at quickly. So let's just say that, uh, so, but very surprisingly, I kind of, I would make that all the capital and the small character would match, but actually you can ignore them. So let's say if you want to use X or position of transformation, let's just say that, so you probably uh, have some uh, X, but however, as you see that this one is actually, this one you probably know that at least it's this one is double or float. But if you kind of track them, let's just track them. So now let's say that imagine that you want to use position and X. This one's supposed to be under transform. Oh yes, they are transform. Actually there are capital one and small one. So this one is capital transform position. And then transform is component transform. So as you see, the difference between these two is that the big one T is a class. Meaning if you want to create a new class, use this template. But if you want to use this one, let's say the small character one transform says this component transform. So if you want to use component transform, uh, use the small character and audition. Yes, there is. And then if you press, and then you can actually use, there's a getter and setter and the position and then what is the data type? Vector three. So you may want to track all this stuff. And then probably then you probably see X, Y, Z and what is the data type of X or Y? It's a float. So kind of you can actually check the data type of it. And then, so now you've got it. And if you want to use that, yeah, as just you see here, I just, now they know that this one is float. So I kind of define some X. So I just call it my X or I say uh, position X, PX is transform position and X. And then if you want to actually track the number, if you want to see the number, I just do uh, debug dot log and function and I'll just down, write down px and that's it. So I just simply save it. So it'll shoot out the x value continuously, but x value would not really change that much. I would actually rather instead use y because y is the height value that ball is keeping down. So I just simply use y value. I change to y and then I just shoot out this py. So I save, save it, go back to script. And then if I run it, so if I go to console, okay, I stop it and check about the first one because it is a repeated one. Okay, let's see that it's true, this one and minus three point, so minus, minus, minus. So this one is a keep changing its Y position.
And so far, this will be very easy. So you can actually get out anything. Uh, and then if you actually want to get another one, such as, let's just say that uh, this one is spear. And then spear, you can actually anything, but um, there are two types. There are actually many different types of many ways that uh, Unity organize their variables. For example, rigid, uh, rigid body and use gravity thing is actually using checkbox. If it is checkbox, can you imagine what is the data type of this one? Probably. Boolean. Yeah, Boolean, so true or false. And then kind of let's check about how this, how can you can access this use gravity? So, so this one is actually, uh, so let's say that this one is rigid body. So I would say I would search rigid body. Oh, okay, so there are rigid body to the constant blah, 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 blah. So I just select a rigid body. And then this one is data type. And I called my RD is my rigid body. And then here I kind of search one more time rigid body. And then uh, how can I access that? Rigid body sphere dot. Okay, dot rigid body dot. You probably don't find type of find object type of so. Oh, so this one's instance. I just call it rigid by type. Oh, I forget that. Uh, how to access rigid body? Huh? Oh yeah, 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 right, yeah. I forgot that. Oh, so that was so you can actually set setter and getter, and you can that get uh get component, and then there are two things. One is uh just one each in component. Then if you use this one, uh, this one is actually generic type collection, and then here that you are collect rigid body. Yes, and then probably it is done. Oh, and, and then the dot, and you are going to use use gravity. What did, I think no, that's really not this one. Not this, and here, and then after that, rigid body component. Get rigid body zero. Okay. Get Get uh, supposed to be. Oh, I need method. Okay. Okay. Then it's done. And then rd dot. Now you can actually use that. The use gravity. Now use gravity comes after. And then probably it's a getter setter. And then this is the kind of the variable that you're going to use. And this is probably truth or false. So what you can use as this one is you can actually debug that log and RD use gravity. And actually this is kind of way of collecting, accessing other types of it. So if you, I save it. And then I clean, clear this console. And if I run it and stop it, oh, there's an error. There's no rigid body of just a block game. Let me just double check. Uh, and here, update. So this a block. Oh, I don't have in here block a rigid body. So I have to add one. So I just add rigid body and then it is true. So I just simply go back to clear one more time and run it. So I just stop it. And if I go in, and it said false because our blocks rigid bus use this gravity. Just go repeatedly, we said first. Now go in here. Oh, probably I change it after. So now uh, this block code is gravity is yes. 
and then come in here. I just save it one more time. So this is blocks and check about gravity. Are the graphics here? So going back here, I click here. Oh, before doing that, I just clean it and then one more time and stop it. This comes out false. False come from the board. Oh, I see. Oh, then actually this true is actually came from the block object and this false is came from the ball object. So this one comes from, you've got this. So this block code is actually says false. And then meaning that the, in the board script, I have one, yeah, the kind of, I prepared it for, so if I open this ball, Go to project. So I kind of in the board script, I have one that I exercise for this teaching. So if I double click it, uh, board, then actually this board has also RD use gravity, and then this one shows the gravity as well. Okay. So, okay, that's the one. So, to kind of show, uh, showing you how to access all the parameters in component. And now the second one is how to set the parameter, meaning the, how to change the values of each variable. So let's say that, uh, let's use this ball script. Now if uh, not the ball, and then let's, the, this block is this one in the middle. And then the way how I design is that this one is moving back and forth as a kind of like a huddle. So the way how I designed is that this one moving left and right. So meaning that X, as if you see here, position axis keep changing. And then if I see from the top, it is center, this is zero. If I move left, this one become minus one or minus something. So I kind of set the minimum, the leftmost limit as minus 1.5. And then the rightmost limit is I set as 1.5. So if you wanna do something uh, Y or Z or X, check about their value by moving and eyeballing it. So I set minus 1.5 and maximum 1.5. Are there two limits that moving left and right continuously. So this is about kind of some design that I have here. So if I going back to ball script, to get the first thing you want to see is how can I use the current position of X? To access that, as you see here, what I just showed you, so transform that Position transform. Not position. That actually what we use is was actually x value. And then this one is actually float value of it. So I'm using ball. Okay, so x. So now this is the value. And let's just simply use this one to see. So I just simply use debug dot log. And then let's use this transform x. And then let's remove or unnecessary debug for now. Let's clean up. So this is ball and in the blocks, I don't want to see them. So I just comment out. Another one. Okay, so these are all done. And then balls. So I have another debug here. So I just comment out. So I have only one debug. So I save them all and coming back to Unity, coming back to console, clear. And if you run it, oh, actually the X is actually keeps zero. So it is not the X, uh, the Y, the, so actually the value is X. So keep moving and right. And this one is full X. So let's just say that 
let the code see first uh, one more time. So transform X and keep updating it. Let's double check, is this really, so this one is X and this is block. Block is X is transforming. Uh, block, this is the, ah, this is the block. And then the code I've changed was four. Sorry for that. So now going back to blocks. Now, actually I'm using this one. So this is what I tell you that this one is quite confusing a lot. So make sure that where you're working on. So let's say what we want to see is the X value. So I said debug dot log function to see and then position dot uh, position dot a uh, transform transform dot position dot x and then semicolon and then I don't need this one so this one is block and nothing okay then it's okay and save them coming back to unity clear and if you run it so it said x position is kind of showing so this one is actually keep showing that where is dear where is this xr x is and then you said so coming back to so now this one uh transform position x is actually the current position and let's imagine that we want to move this position and then uh, we don't really need all this stuff and then what we have to do is actually we have to create a new vector three so when we update a new value to this transform so what the way we have to the renew this one is we are going to renew everything of the position in the transform. So to do that, what we need is transform that position. And then we have to offer, and then you should probably, I can only update X. Was it true? No, not only this is the only way. Yes. Okay. I kind of thought that why not just simply updating X will not give this one, but I couldn't find another solution. So this is the kind of like, as far as I know, only way. So the only way is offer this one new data value to this position, but the position is vector three. So we have to set a new one. So vector three, and then we have to offer X, Y, and Z like this. So this is a way to reset this one. So let's kind of, uh, as a test, let's just say that this one is zero comma zero comma zero. So this one simply, Locate this one to zero, 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 whatever it is. So let's just exercise it. So save it. And then it will do, uh, I will just comment out the rest of it. So I save it. Now, if you see that, now clear this whatever the original position will be the box will go to zero 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 i don't know what's going on <laughs> so actually for somehow this is like probably the zero 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 position i don't know why but it is rotating huh? because it has a rigid bar ah okay i see i see okay well, why is it rotating? Because he, he has a contact with the... Ah, I see, I see. So when did this move it hit it? You guess it? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, it, when did this move? It kind of self-rotating because of the momentum. Yes, because of the, the contact, I think. So. Ah, okay, I see. All right. Okay, so this is... Kind of, but okay, so this is rigid body. What I, I just simply moved it, but after that, it just kind of like followed the, the law of physics and then it rotated. But it cannot really move out because I didn't change the movement, but it can rotate. So, so now this is kind of a way that. So let's say that 
uh, we want to give a new X value. And then to do that, we want to update it again and again. So, and then we want to keep the, uh, put the value. So I actually, instead of, I kind of create a new value outside of it. Uh, okay, so let's do each one first. Let's say that I would say that integer, uh, I called it, uh, okay, so first of all, I need to know the current position of it. So I kind of say that uh, X is transform dot position dot X. So this is actually current position of it, uh, not integer, it's supposed to be float. And then what I'm going to do is I want to keep change this X position. So probably let's say that X is X plus 0 0.1, meaning that for each frame, it will update, but I have to change it to float. So this one is simply updating it. And then here, instead of giving zero, I change it to X. Uh, it, it is complaining, okay, it's gone. Okay, so I just saved it. What? Okay, you kind of want a kind of simple or form. So I just, let's do it. Then actually it will, I simply update that. So it will move into well, one direction. So if I run it, so it just, whoop, it just fly away. So now what I want is kind of keep back and forth. So instead of giving one value that just go one direction, when it hit the, another boundary, it won't go back to. And if I hit another boundary, it come back. So very simple game thing. So this one, I just set like this. So this one is actually what I did. So now, so minus, okay, so I just kind of uncomment this one, the same thing. So, okay, so X is, I just delete this one. So this is uh, when X is actually simply moving 0 0.1. So when it actually hit maximum 1.5 F, actually Delta is changed to 0 0.1. So actually I need to change into this one minus. So if it, uh, so if it is higher than one, this one is moving 0 0.1. So it's, it's, it's supposed to be reversed. And then if it hit, um, okay, let's just check about the, this symbol a little bit later. So this one is simply, this is the same thing using if and else if. And as you probably see, I don't have else. The else component is actually the one in the middle and actually I don't need to do anything. So I just make it blank. So this is, you don't need it. And then if you run this, I save it. Clear. And then I run it. Oh, okay, so I have to reverse the, so I have to change this one as plus. Okay, and then. And the the plus. Huh? Plus. The the plus. Oh, okay. Plus. And then save it. Oh, what's going on? So X is one, the X is value and X is current with the plus one. Oh, okay. So I have one more thing I have to do. So now here I create a new val the new variable value, which is float. And then I called it Delta. And then so far, I just set it as 1.5. And then instead of the hard number here, I use it uh, to change it to float. Then I change this one to, instead of 0 0.1, I change it to Delta. And then this Delta is keep changing its plus and minus uh, kind of symbol here. And I saved it. And then clear and then repeat it. Oh, okay, so that must be, I think it's negative. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. Let's just see. So minus delta and delta is coming here. And then delta will be if it is if it's smaller than minus one point minus so it will okay uh, first of all check about the symbol so this is x I have to see uh, I just check this block. Well, in terms of y, let's say that x is so x is this one is so this one is moving block, this one is plus. Okay, so at the beginning, so it'll it I just said it that's plus, so it'll move at the from the beginning, it'll move y axis. And then if it is oh, okay, then actually this one's supposed to be plus, and this one's supposed to be minus because as you see that it's hit the maximum, I want to rotate it to the minus. And then if it is hit the minus value, I want to change it to plus. So now this one, I hope. Is it wrong? I think the delta, the declaration of delta should be outside. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, the, the otherwise then it'll be reset. So I also, this one's supposed to be, oh, actually I have it here. So I just kind of refreshed, that's what happened. So I save it and I do that here and then clear. So now it's kind of rotating. Why is it now rotating here? I, I'm sure that this one may hit it to so something. So, it's, so I kind of, uh, moving it back to its original location. Oh, because of this one that I moved the block in in the code. So coming here, I have to remove. This is the block, and x. Oh, so this one is so now this one's so x y zero and zero. Uh, instead of doing this, what I have to do is. Let's check this one. The original position is minus. I just write down, or you can do, you can actually collect the value and then you can use that variable. What I mean by is you can also get, instead of using this, uh, let's say that you can do float y is transform dot position dot y. Then you can. Position, position, okay, then you can use G and then uh, X, this one Y and this one is G and then this one X, Y and Z. So now Y and G will maintain the same position, however, X will be updated. Okay, so if you here, I do that. So still, ah, because this one is rigid body, I, I need to remove the rigid body thing. And I just kind of remove this gravity or I just, I just kind of simply remove it rigid body. So if I do one more time. Uh, let's, oh, because I kind of changed it while it, this one is animating. So I'm coming back to block and delete it, remove up, and then it's like, so now it's okay. Uh, I just have a question. Yes. Uh, is it mandatory to, to create a new vector? Can't you just like modify the X position? <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah, actually, that's something I thought naturally is supposed to do that. So kind of, yeah, it's supposed to just update X position, right? 
but I couldn't find another example. It always used that way. I don't know why. Oh. Because they don't, they don't implement a function like that. When we call like position point x, it's simply a return. So it sounds like more yeah. multiplied by the return. So it looks like, uh, so uh, here's the issue. So is this, this is my assumption. Uh, do you know the difference between array and Python, array and yes. tuple? Do you see array. the difference between tuple and array? Yeah. So, because like tuple, uh, you can only say tuple. But yeah, it's not uh, actually. So, I think tuple is not menu, menu is not changeable, right? Array can be yeah. changed, but tuple cannot be. Yeah. It kind of looks like the same thing. So, they kind of set this position as each x, y, z is tuple, okay. but this position is like kind of like it's changeable. I kind of, yeah. Okay, so uh, these are roughly the basics of it, the coding. Again, uh, there are two multiple things that it will confuse you a lot. Um, and then, okay, so here, I'll, every one of you to do that, which is UML. Are you comfortable with UML? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm really sure that Many professors in computer science school ask you to submit your UML, right? Yes. <laughs> so I actually recommend it too. And then he knows how tedious it is. <laughs> but I guarantee that it is very helpful. And those who have a small face, it means you don't, you're not, you're, you never submit UML assignments before. Okay, so here I'm teaching you how to use UML. Okay. It's really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, unlike uh, I mean, the tour, I mean, I really love the UML. Actually, I, I okay, so UML, I, it's, uh, U, UML is uh, really anyone who is, anyone who is that I heard UML for the first time in my life, hands up there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so first of all, UML is not, uh, working with computer program, UML, work with paper, <laughs> not ballpoint pen, work with pencil and eraser all the time. Is this how you want to? No, 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 for draw. Oh, really? You just use the software? Yeah, you just. Uh, oh, okay. Like My suggestion account. UML is not really a programming tool, either kind of transforming tool. It's just for your head, your brain. Oh, yeah, but like uh, on the, the website? Yeah, yeah. Draw.io. Yeah, yeah. Then they will convert to code or something. No, it's just, just to, just to draw it. Yeah, to, to draw it like uh, just type really? it like uh, draw dot io. What is it? It's an uh, open source thing. Like the. Uh, Would you type here? Well, but uh, I will check about the software. However, no. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this. Yeah. Draw dot io. Yeah. Oh, that's the same layout as this one. And then you just have, ah, like, okay, for example, okay. like, uh, yeah, you yeah, have, yeah. like, a normal yeah, section. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you have, like, for example, like, uh, this one. Okay, all right. Class type. You can put, like, multiple class type, for example. Okay, all right. And then, okay. like, uh, link it together, like, right. like this. So if you, are, if you are comfortable using this, you are welcome to use it. So if you, anyone who want to use this, was draw that io? Yeah. Okay, I will upload it to the. But my suggestion, draw using your pencil and paper. I'm highly sure that. When is your last time to grab a pencil? <laughs> so UML, I will try to explain it. So there are many different, uh, uh, actually types of UML, and, uh, okay. Uh, at the beginning of okay, all my computer programming course, I make it mandatory for my students to submit UML. It's like yours too? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. It's really kind of educational tool. And also it really helps you to organize the code structure in your brain. And <laughs> at the first and second week of class, I remember that all their eyes just look like yours. <laughs> 
And then at the end of the semester, many students email me back to me without the UNO. Now I cannot think. Trust me, it will be really good. It will save your tremendous amount of time working software. That's what my previous students justified or kind of explained to me. Okay, so how to do that? So uh, what you have to draw are two things. One is class diagram, the other is sequence diagram. So Ishan, you're comfortable with it. Um, I think when I was learning object oriented. Yeah, yeah, you learned it there, yeah. yeah. So now let's imagine that and let's just draw together what we have to do until so far. So here, <laughs> I like it here, <laughs> but I, again, I recommend for you to, one of the reasons I recommend for you to use paper and pencil, this one is 100 times faster than you use this software. Oh, man. So yeah, yeah, you can just draw UML, whole UML in five seconds or 10 seconds. If you use that IO, draw IO software, it, it may take five, 10 minutes probably. Because I'm really used to that, so it's helpful because like we can we can walk uh, as, uh, as many people as we want on it. Yeah. So continuously. So okay. So it's up to you. And you can give it track of it uh -huh, just uh -huh. for that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, usually I do it on paper first. Thing. Okay. So okay. So <laughs> if you need a paper, tell me. I can give you unlimited amount of papers. <laughs> okay. So let's do that. So class diagram. Oh, okay. I have no time. I have to run. Okay. So class diagram. UML look like this. So simply, all you have to do is uh, draw box like this. So at the in the box is divided by three sub boxes. At the beginning, you are going to write down the title of a class. The first second box you write down class members, which is variables. And the second one, this one has always confused. You have to write down class functions. So variables and functions, those two are the thing. And then as you see here, the line, and I, I don't like this kind of specific style, but when you draw horizontally means it's inherited. But if you draw it on a horizontal, rather horizontal, it's called association. But it just kind of, I just want to visually. I already told that it was because like the, the tip of the array was empty. Ah, okay. So this one is inheritance and this yeah. is association? Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, so either way. Uh, okay, so here, but here, let's say that we have five assets, but so far I only write down code in block and spear. So even though, so this, this one is only you draw UML that you have worked on. So I simply, I use two boxes. So one box here, another box here, and I divide it. And then actually the, for the dividing variable and functions, I prefer to use dot line. So here, as you see that if I check about the block code, we have work that I, I worked. Block code has, so class is block. So I write down block. And then this one has start and update. So here's dot update of course we don't really need to draw it because we have so simple thing here but once your code become really complex this one will help you a lot again and then on the update uh, again uml is not for data uml is for your is it's mainly is for uh programming structure not the data. Actually, to actually represent the data, we will have another UML for data structure and the data transformation. But here, we what we have used is actually debug and log. So you can down also, and then in the update, there are many different ways, but I don't really write down all the details here. Then what I write down. So here instead, you may prefer so-called skeletal code. So are you familiar with skeletal code? So skeletal code is abstract function that only contains the, the kind of another function. So here is it's kind of bad way to do that. Better way of doing it is 
let's kind of offer the name of it. So I probably, the first one is simply uh, find X uh, data. So I, uh, let's say that void uh, update has a void find X position and that's it. So I kind of offer a name like uh, I didn't. So I kind of, I, instead of using debug and I just place this one inside of it. So in that, instead I call this one find exposition inside of here. Find exposition, so done. So instead of using all the details, I just replace with a good representative name of it. And then here, what I, uh, uh, this is called. And then here, the second part, mainly what I did was uh, rotate block. So I just rotate. What should I do? Uh, rotate, rotate. Or simply, yeah, I just call it move block. Huh? Translate. Huh? Translate to the, to the word you want. Translate. OK, that's good. So translate block. And then I just I just have only two functions here. And then I just move all others as I just define it as another function. So void translate block. And then I just define it as here and I move all these things. And be careful about the, uh, oh, oh, we define it as class variable, so it will be fine. So now probably, Typo, probably. Trends. Yeah, you the, the S into, uh, yes. So let's we'll see. Okay. So now this is okay. So now update works as a skeletal code, meaning that it only has sub functions in, and it ignore all the details that pro offer us that oh, even in one second, oh, this one explains what it work, what it will do, and then all the details I, I try to hide it. How does it call that? Hiding all the details in OOP. Encapsulate. Okay, so kind of that's kind of I strongly recommend for you to do that. So here in the update, I only have two functions, which is a find x position. And then you can do actually this one is actually equal function. So actually you can write down two things and that's it. So you have four functions in the block, and then you do the same thing with others. So this one is what does what is the role of class diagram? What is the purpose of drawing class diagram? It's like to represent uh, an object and represent relations between objects. Okay. Actually, that's flow chart. Uh, it's a flow chart. Uh, this is a uh, sequence diagram, the relationship of all the functions. This one oh. shows. Oh, because for, for example, uh, I put like, for example, if you have a block with a person, uh -huh. you can have like other blocks like legs, arms, and so and building. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, that, like, uh, you can have like uh, a person as like four legs and. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, what is better? So, you simply show in one drawing, show all the components and their relations. You're right. You're totally right. So, that's the purpose of class diagram. And then, sequence diagram, on the other hand, I rather recommend for you to draw on a vertical. So here, each class diagram will have one uh, sequence diagram. And sequence diagram look like this. So this is sequence diagram. And it shows actually they kind of show kind of general algorithm or flow chart of functions in a class diagram. Uh, this will be soon, will be great help for you. Did you see the, did you remember the fish example that I showed you last time? So it has kind of like five different sizes of fish. And then they all have, so actually there are five flock class and each flock class has their own corresponding fish class. So it's, what is it? Flock class uses another fish class. This is this association or inheritance. Class uses other classes. Association. Association, yes. 
And then, and then all the fish actually uses a fish abstract class. It defines all the phases. And this one is inheritance. So, and then again, this will be very helpful. So now let's see this uh, block code. So let's say that we have block class at the beginning, and then we draw a vertical line. And this vertical line represents the timeline. And then in this case, actually, we press this run button by human being. So this is not a joke. I draw like this skeleton man that we, as a human. And actually, this one will be replaced by server or another uh, end computing if there is a sensor. And then this one, what does it do? It will initiate this class. But actually, there is no initiation. This will come hidden. But what is it at the beginning? It has, what is it? Update, start, what does the name of it? It has a start function. And then it has a long, a relatively long update function. And then in the update function has find the position. So it has a find the position and it has Translate position, find position, translate block function. So it'll look like this. And then later, you also, you also have another class that uses. So then actually, you will have another class and actually uses another classes function. I kind of like this. So, first of all, this is the one we have that. So, I buy to draw these two diagrams because I explained them, but I finished it in three, four minutes. You can do it in half 30 seconds. So it will not be a burden at all, but I recommend for you, strongly recommend for you to do it. And actually, so now on, uh, now let's actually one more. Uh, so now we have this conditional statement. So now this one, I, I'll just kind of enlarge that. So now this one I just extracted. This one is my translate block. And the timeline here. And actually I have actually two conditioners, basically one conditioner with two, two, two cases. I will explain how to draw iteration in general next time. So to draw, what does the if means? Even though there are two occasions, only one will run, meaning that the, if one runs, the other will be eliminated or do not work. So kind of I draw a box. What are the three programming structures components? One. <laughs> what are the three? If you use other than this three structure, you're making a spaghetti code. So to avoid of making spaghetti code, you have to use only these three structures. What are they? Function, iteration, condition. So these are key structure. And the key structures, as you see here, represented as boxes. As thus, you are kind of drawing conditional using dot line box, if, else if. And then inside of it, because we have no function here, so we are going to do nothing to draw. However, just kind of just telling you if there is any function. And then since delta is variable, we don't draw it in UML because in draw in UML, those are two minor details to draw. So I ignore them. Uh, only functions will be drawn here. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, uh, and then. Your next week's assignment, think about your final project and do, and then actually, so, and then I have to say that Unique has, has so much, it has, has a too much wide spectrum in terms of tutorials and applications. So actually, instead of going the basic thing, I want, I want you to let me know that I like to do this, then I'll try to help you to do that instead of, walking through all the unnecessary details that 
are covering all those things. Okay, so uh, just today and Tuesday, have fun. <laughs> and after Wednesday, try to do something with some code. Uh, in normally what I do is I prefer, so in, today I just explain using the generic box or cube in the Unity, I rarely do that. I just made all the geometry in the Rhino 3D and import it. And then actually I just add some script in that. That's kind of how it works. Any questions so far? So today's not so tough, right? It's just, just basic thing refresh. No. Actually, I have a question. Yeah. Like um, when, when I import uh, Rhino 3D object, uh -huh. I couldn't like uh, remodel it. It's, it's normal, like, because I had like, uh, for example, uh, a chair, I had like the legs and the, or this I had the legs and the top body. And I couldn't like uh, to use them in uh, Unity, like put them all in, a, in, a, in, a, in an object like, uh, so I have like uh, 100 objects uh, at the, on the left and it's like uh, not convenient at all. So, so in computer, so in, uh, in uh, computational geometries or computational graphics, uh, there is a kind of certain range of actions you can do. So that is, uh, or that is actually organized called as uh, shape grammar. So shape grammar is a way that all the geometry is kind of, it just kind of clear out and categorize all the operations you can do in a computer. And then uh, it is just kind of first invented by MIT professors, my uh, advisors. And then uh, one of the representative things are as you, you already actually know, which is uh, So uh, shape grammar, are they any clear one? So those are already you things you know. Um, yeah, translation, mirror, rotation, scaling, copy, sure, bent. <laughs> that you already know. So let's say that, and then later on, if you kind of like, if you want to do uh, something Boolean operation, you can add them too. But however, you can think of it that if you are kind of like only made, made you made something basic, regular blocks in Rhino and importing it. And then you are kind of creating some combined or assembled object in Unity 3D by moving, translating, scaling, rotating, mirroring, Kind of those kind of by using those kind of operations. That's our only available operations using computer programming. Yeah. So something, if you want to import something static, done. And then even no matter how complex geometry you have, it, if it, if they are static, just finish in Rhino, and you can use Rhino Python and other stuff. And only that kind of dynamic or kinetic gestures can be imported to Unity and then you can actually write, add a script using that. And if you're thinking about something robotics like human movement or machines movement, actually you may want to touch about inverse kinematics, probably. All right. Uh, for those who, <laughs> desperate guys, <laughs> uh, do not, you don't really need to be stressed, just kind of go very slowly. And they do something very simple. Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, this one is kind of really shocking book to me. Uh, you know this book? Uh, this book in English was "The Order of Time, Color, Rebellion." I will find English one. The order of so what do you argue that there's no time 
Yeah, I was, I'm not quite convinced yet. <laughs> but imagine going back to 1940, ah, I keep forgetting the number, 1940, 17. Huh? 17. 1917. How does the movie make a mood of time moving right so it shows the kind of mood the, the time spending in the war area by simply rotating the light changing the brightness and darkness so i again please do not consider doing something really complex focus on something simple thing what is the kind of concept that you want to work on i don't know it's for me maybe family love loneliness or peace or <laughs> focus on one word or two that you want to focus on then how to represent those notions using computational movement using light shadow reflection color changing or scale variances Yes, your confusing eyes will be changed into more clear and clear concept. So keep, keep thinking about what you want to do as a final project. Okay, that's it for today. Any questions? Okay, all right. We'll see you on Wednesday. All right. <laughs>